I'll mention the following mnemonic because every time I see it in a review book or a website, it fails to mention a key feature. The mnemonic is spin and snout, and it helps us interpret the specificities and sensitivities of tests. If a test is very specific, for example, it has 100% specificity, we refer to the first part of the mnemonic, spin. Notice that both words start with the letters SP. A positive result means we can rule in the disease, and you can remember this by using the letter P from the word spin, which is the part of the mnemonic most often forgot about. Tests that are specific rule in diseases, but they may lack sensitivity, and thus we may not diagnose everyone, and that is called a false negative. And now for snout. If you are using a test that is very sensitive, we refer to the second part of the mnemonic, snout. Notice the first two consonants of both words are S, N. This time, a negative test means we can rule the disease out. So tests that are sensitive help rule out diseases. However, they may lack specificity, meaning we might overdiagnose, and that is called a false positive. Now let's do an example, and because it's Easter, we're going to be talking about Easter eggs. There are 10 rooms, all are square and have white walls, a white ceiling, and a white floor. We'll say the dimensions of each room are 20 by 20 by 9. Some of the rooms will have Easter eggs in them. All of the eggs are either real eggs, painted blue, that have gone rotten, or they will be fake blue plastic eggs. It is your job to identify all the rooms with the rotten eggs in them making sure that at the end of your assignment you have identified all the rooms with rotten eggs. There is one caveat. You are only allowed one of two tests. You may either, number one, use vision only and not be allowed to walk around at all, or two, use only touch, but you are allowed to walk around the rooms. So here are the rooms and all the eggs. Using vision, we see that there are four positive and six negative test results. Unfortunately, we have to assume that the four rooms with eggs may have rotten eggs, even though every egg in every room may only be plastic. Thus, we may have false positives. However, this allows us to safely say that none of the empty rooms have rotten eggs, so our vision test is 100% sensitive, and that we have ruled out rotten eggs in all the empty rooms. Now using touch, we blindly walk into the rooms and search for eggs. The first real egg found gives that room a positive result and we can move on to the next. Thus, we don't have to find every egg in every room, as long as we find at least one real egg. But because we are using only touch, we are limited by the height of the room, which was 9 feet. And this could increase the chance of us missing any real eggs. Look at the room on the far bottom right. It appears to be empty. However, there is a rotten egg hanging from the ceiling that gets missed. Thus, we have a false negative test for room 10. False negative tests are one of the problems with specificity. Because it is very easy to distinguish real eggs from plastic eggs, touch has an incredibly high specificity. However, because of the dimensions of the room, our sensitivity is, l is limited. A common analogy to this example would be blood transfusions. If each room represented a unit of blood from a random donor, then each rotten egg could represent an HIV virus. Here we would want to use the most sensitive test possible in order to rule out HIV in all the bags that test negative. 
The downside is that some of our bags may test falsely positive and we may end up throwing away perfectly normal blood.